In the darkest nightmares of his harshest critics, Donald Trump is the second coming of Hitler. We should look at Adolf Hitler in 1929. The number of prominent people comparing you to Adolf Hitler is actually growing by the day. Wait, no. He's a mashup of Venezuela Chavez, Italy's Berlusconi, and Turkey's Erdogan. Actually, scratch that. He's Bane from Batman. We are transferring power and, and giving, giving it back, back to you, the, the people. people. Are we really living in an authoritarian, dystopian nightmare world? Or is that an exaggeration? There's a lot that separates these guys, beyond the fact that one is a fictional supervillain. But they all have at least one thing in common. All could be described as populist authoritarians. According to the political scientists Pippinaris and Ronald Engelhart, this type of leader combines two big ideas. The first is populism. Populists often claim that they alone represent ordinary people, present themselves as outsiders challenging corrupt elites, maintain direct links with their followers through rallies, TV, social media, and interpret election results as permission to govern as they wish, even if that means disregarding minority rights and the separation of government powers. The second is authoritarianism. Authoritarians often implement tough security measures against threats from outsiders, promote a nativist brand of nationalism, demonstrate little tolerance of multiculturalism, and exercise a concentrated form of power involving strong, charismatic leadership. And it's a good time to be a populist authoritarian. The growth of democracies in the world has stalled. And in the Western world, where there are democracies, populist authoritarian politicians are gaining strength. So, will Donald Trump be America's first populist authoritarian president? Trump definitely fits the mold of a populist. Claiming to exclusively embody the will of the people rather than the establishment? Check. I alone can fix it. Communicating directly with his followers? Check. The fact that I have such power in terms of numbers with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc., I think it helped me win. Prioritizing election results over other aspects of democracy like free speech? Check. Watched protests yesterday, but was under the impression that we just had an election. As for whether Trump is an authoritarian, well, you could say he has authoritarian instincts. You could even say he's authoritarian curious. But here, things are a bit more complicated. Trump is without a doubt a nationalist who favors harsh measures to protect the homeland against external threats. I am going to keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. He has also repeatedly praised authoritarian leaders for their strength in use of violence against opponents. Saddam Hussein was a bad guy, right? But you know what he did well? He killed terrorists. He did that so good. And then, of course, there's the admiration of Vladimir Putin that he's been expressing since at least 2013. Do you like Vladimir Putin's comments about you? Sure. When people call you brilliant, that's always good, especially when the person heads up Russia. Still, it's important to note Trump has not expressed a contempt for democracy that other authoritarians have. Erdogan has arrested thousands of political opponents and wiped out freedom of the press in Turkey. Chavez tried to create a one-party state in Venezuela. Trump has no such record of anti-democratic measures. The United States is one of the oldest democracies in the world, and our political system has more checks on power than most other democracies. But American democracy has rarely been under such stress. One study of democracies around the world recently downgraded the United States to a flawed democracy. President Trump has broken with democratic norms, like not releasing his tax returns, while also bullying the free press and spreading conspiracy theories about massive voter fraud. We might not be in an authoritarian dystopia, but this is how the story often starts. This is Unprecedented, a weekly series where different Atlantic writers explore what's happening in this new era of American politics. Let us know in the comments what you want us to tackle next. I'm Ori Freeman, and thanks for watching.